And I know there are a lot of thoughts out there about where this team is right now, but what's your evaluation of where this team is? Well, I, I think it's, it's certainly not where we were hoping to be uh, once we started the season. I think if you go back and look at where we thought we'd be, we thought we'd have, uh, you know, one of the better goaltending tandems in the league. We thought our defense would be solid, and, and we thought if we had a concern, it might be scoring goals. So, um, but we certainly felt we'd be a team that would be competitive and with some bounces and breaks, you know, hopefully we could uh, surprise some people and, and have a, a pretty successful year. Unfortunately, uh, to this point, it just hasn't gone the way we had hoped. And, um, you know, I don't think it's for a lack of effort. I think our guys are competing and battling hard. We just can't seem to put it all together. When we get saves, we can't score. We score goals, we can't get saves. And, and we have to find a way to mesh it all and get moving in the right direction. Yeah, sort of like Murphy's Law so far. I know COVID has been a challenge, especially <clears throat> not having a farm system with years of draft picks in order. Uh, but how tempted have you been to dip into the trade market for short-term fixes? Well, I mean, I think you're always looking at that. I mean, I think the key for us is, does it really make sense at this point to give up a first or second or third round pick to get somebody that, you know, is is not really going to make a significant impact for the, for the short haul? If there's somebody there that we think makes sense for the organization over time, then that, that's a different uh, scenario to look at. But just to throw away draft picks, we think it's critical that we build and draft from the ground up. Um, you know, you look at some of the draft picks we have from last year, certainly Matty Beneers comes to the forefront having a great year at Michigan, was in the World Juniors. Unfortunately, that got shut down, but now he's going to represent, you know, our country at the Olympics here. So uh, really excited to see Maddie in the Olympics. And, and uh, you know, we think he's got a bright future for our organization moving well, moving forward. And that's what we have to continue to do. We have to draft good players and start building from the ground up as well as, as trying to add to the uh, trade market and, and uh, free agent market. I want to get to Matty Berniers in just a minute, but you've said the worst thing you could do is to panic and change course uh, to the long-term plan. I'm not sure fans are really privy to a couple of things, including the plan itself. We've heard to draft well, develop well, build from the ground up, but what exactly is the plan and what kind of timeline do you have for it? Is it two years? Is it three years? Is it five years? <laughs> Well, you know, I think if you go back and read some of the comments that Vegas had when they went into the expansion draft, um, you know, their plan was more or less a five-year plan and sort of building and developing. And and then, you know, I think some of the quotes after said they got lucky in the way things went and they went a different direction. So, you know, we think we can speed that process up. Um, you know, we think we've got a solid core from the draft this summer and you continue to work on finding ways to add to it. And with cap space and with money, we certainly think we can be a player in the free agent market. There's always some risk there because you don't know going to get there or not when, when free agency hits but uh, and if they want to sign with you or somebody else but certainly we think that we can be a player in that market and then you know who knows what happens with COVID affecting the league this year in some of the games does it stay flat again does it go up only minimally, minimally and, and you know does that affect teams and their ability to sign some of their players or have to move players and then being in a position to take advantage of that uh, also would be beneficial for us so uh, a lot of things can happen but uh, you know for us key component of it is, is drafting the right players and building from the ground up. You look at a lot of successful teams, they do that well. And then as well as doing that, in the meantime, doing everything we can to be con competitive and successful by adding th players through trades or free agency as well. So I, I guess the follow-up to that is, is twofold. First, does ownership have the patience to stick it out based on this five-year plan, hopefully sped up a little bit, if there is a continued struggle to win games as there has been lately? Yeah, I mean, the ownership has been great from day one. Uh, you know, I wouldn't say we've got a five-year plan. That was more what Vegas has had. We're hoping to do this sooner than that. Um, but, you know, ownership has been good. They've given the green light to spend to the cap if need be. Um, you know, I think you got to be careful in that regard, uh, just going out and signing guys for the heck of signing guys. And then when you really need the cap space, you don't have it. It can be critical. So, um, you know, I know it's frustrating. I think our fans have been absolutely tremendous to this point. You come to the building. They're very vocal, very supportive. I think they appreciate the efforts the guys are putting forward. I'm sure they're like us, not happy with the final results. And nobody's more frustrated than our players and staff and management. But, um, um, you know, I think as long as they're with us for the ride here, you know, hopefully as, as we move forward, they're going to see a lot more success. And then that'll make the, the tougher times even more enjoyable once we start having that success year after year. You kind of touched on my next question. How do you keep the fans engaged amidst the struggles? I know no one was expecting Vegas results from day one. Also, no one was expecting this either. Uh, there are a lot of people paying a lot of money to attend games right now. They are. No, there's no question. And, and I think, you know, I think from the, the way we look at it from our players, I mean, they've been they've been absolutely fantastic. You know, I think, um, you know, we haven't haven't got the results we've wanted. Um, you know, it's not like 
you know, we haven't been close in a lot of the games. I think we've given up like 12 empty net goals against. So we're in the game at the end. We just can't get the equalizer or the game winning goal. And that doesn't include the games we've had to pull a goaltender and didn't give up an empty net goal against. So, um, you know, I, I would hope that at least they appreciate the effort and the fact that we're there and we're competitive and, and hang in there with us for this ride because, uh, as we said, we're going to make it better. Yeah, the losing streak has overshadowed some really bright spots. Uh, Jordan Eberle named an all-star. Jared McCann has had an exceptional year as well. What are you excited about from what you've seen so far? Well, you know, I, I think you saw some of the things early in the season. Um, you know, we had some some tough nights where, where I thought we deserved to win and couldn't find a way to win. Um, and then we went on a streak there towards the end of November, early December. We were 5-2-1 and one against some pretty good teams. And then, you know, over I think starting December 8th through January 3rd, we lost, I think, 13 players to COVID. And um, it's just crazy. I mean, the schedule is tough enough as it is. I mean, when you look at the the way our schedule, schedule lays out, I think we're the second worst schedule in the league this year in regards to teams catching us tired, meaning we have to play back-to-back -back nights and they're not playing the night before. So that's a complication. You factor in the... Olympic schedule sort of condensing the schedule being a Western team you don't get as much time to practice as as it is you factor in those two factors you're even getting less time it makes it even harder for your group to come together and understand and work together with each other and stuff but you know I think our guys have continued to work at it. I think our coaches have continued to work at it and uh, you know I think we need to get a win under our belt here so hopefully that relieves some of the pressure they're feeling and we can turn this thing around in a different direction. Hopefully that comes tomorrow I know goaltending speaking of which goaltending has been an issue and a lot of folks thought it would be a strength first off Chris Drieger goes on the COVID list today how does that affect you guys for the next week yeah so unfortunately I mean it's like Christmas uh, it, it seems like you had can't catch a break uh, early in the season uh, had a sprained knee uh, started to play well ended up with a groin issue uh, again I thought he was starting to play well here and and now COVID hits him so you know he'll be out for the next five days per NHL uh, protocol um, Grubauer um, will, will step to the forefront for the game tomorrow. And then uh, we'll recall, um, in this case, uh, Anton Bebo because uh, uh, Joy Decord is in Charlotte and they're having a major snowstorm where all the flights are getting canceled, so we can't get them out. So we'll get Bebo in for tomorrow's game to back up, and then we'll reassess and move forward from there. Snowstorm's just par for the course this season in terms of all the challenges that you guys have had. Uh, in I Seattle and in the South. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. I, I understand that, that Philip Grubauer was a Vezina finalist last year. Uh, given the investment and commitment you've made long-term with him, do you think his play uh, should reflect on your evaluation as a general manager more than other players out there? Well, hey, I mean, at the end of the day, the buck stops with me. I'm the one that made the decision. But I certainly feel that Philip is a better goaltender than he's showing this year. Um, now, you can go back and look at some big-name goaltenders, uh, you know, Carey Price, Marc-Andre Fleury, uh, just to name a couple. And and they've had seasons where they, you know, it just hasn't gone the way they, they've hoped it can go And certainly in Phillips' case, you go back the last seven years, five of those seven years, he's been <clears throat> way better and sort of expected goals against uh, on his on his record. This year, unfortunately, it's gone the opposite direction. But, you know, we figure you continue to work at it. Hopefully we get better in front of him and uh, we can we can bounce back with a, a much better performance moving forward. He's not happy with his game. He would tell you that as well. But uh, we still believe that he has the ability to come back and be a strong goaltender for us. Yeah, the one one reason I ask is because we've seen how good Carolina is this season and a lot of their talent can be attributed to you and your job as uh, a general manager there. I mean, goaltending has always sort of been an issue while you were in Carolina. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I I've, uh, haven't had my luck with goaltenders. Uh, that's putting it mildly for sure to this point. But, you know, I, I think we thought and a lot of people thought when we had Grubauer and Drieger last summer, that, you know, we had a solid tandem that could be one of the top tandems in the league. Unfortunately, it hasn't panned out that way to this point, but that doesn't mean it can't become that moving forward. You mentioned it before. This team has played well enough to win more games than they have. A few lapses have cost some games uh, in the last month or so. Uh, how much of that do you think comes down to coaching, and what is your measure of a coach's success in an expansion season? Well, I kind of touched on it earlier. It's been pretty hard. Um, in a lot of factors, you know, like I said, the Western Conference teams don't get as much practice as these to begin with because of travel and stuff. We condense the schedule around the Olympics and, and then you throw in all the COVID stops and starts. If we get to the rink some days, we're expected to practice. Somebody pops with a COVID case and we got to shut everything down and get everybody away from the rink to make sure nobody else has it before we come back and practice. So um, it's been a very uh, tough challenge in a lot of different areas. I think it's... Um, 
if you look at a lot of other GM's comments, especially in the first 20, 25 games, uh, it was really hard to sort of get an evaluation on where you are and what you're doing. And I think our situation hasn't been any different. It's really been tough for our players. And that makes it tough for the coaches um, not having the same lineup, consistent lineup. You know, we've iced the lineup of 12 forwards that we thought we would play this season with for a grand total of two periods. And with Tanev out for the rest of the year, you know, we're not going to be able to improve on that. So basically, the, the 12 forwards we thought we would play every night, we've played for two periods this year. And losing Tanev hurts, losing Swartz for six weeks hurts just because we don't have the depth that other teams have that you mentioned earlier. So it's certainly been a challenge. And I think our coaches have continued to work and battle at it. Our players have continued to work and compete. And, you know, that's what we want to see moving forward. You'll have to excuse me because I'm coming right off a disappointing NFL season for the Seahawks. Uh, a lot of people saw an underachieving team finish the season really strong the last couple of weeks, even when they did not have anything to play for. Uh, and a lot of people give credit to the head coach in a circumstance like that. Uh, how much confidence do you have that Dave Hackstall was and is the right person for this job? I still have confidence that Dave is and, and will be the right person for this job. Like I said, it's it's been unique and some of the challenges we've got, you know, we're not even at halfway point during the season. So trying to learn, learn the personnel, implement systems. I mean, you look last night at the game against Los Angeles. I mean, they've been together for a while. They've been playing that 1-3-1 one, one for a lot of years. All their players know it. That's the first time we faced it. I thought we made some really good adjustments coming through the neutral zone so we could attack with possession more so than turning the puck over. You know, uh, and that goes back on the coaches and our players. They're willing to continue to work and try and get better, and they're not going to quit doing that. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be challenging moving forward, especially with where we are and some of the injuries we have, no doubt. But, uh, you know, hopefully we can stay healthy and, and get some bodies back and, and uh, you know, continue to battle and fight and get some bounces to go our way and, and, and some wins to go in our direction. You've got the trade yeah. deadline coming up in a couple of months. Are there any untouchables or is there anyone on the roster who is fair game? Yeah, no, I, I think looking at where we are, you have to look at everything and assess everything. And, and uh, you know, I think if the right offer is there, I mean, you know, it's the old standard line, Wayne Gretzky got traded. I guess anybody can get traded. But uh, certainly we feel comfortable with a core group um, and, and <clears throat> sort of building around that moving forward. But, uh, yeah, it all depends on what the offers are uh, and, and who you're talking about. But, uh, you know, I would assume that, that uh, we're open to discussing anybody depending on what those offers are. What's the most important value you're looking for in terms of a return at the trade deadline? Would it be prospects or would it be draft picks? I think it's either or uh, the combination. If you can get the right uh, prospect that you think is is sort of down the path a little bit. I mean, that's tough for an expansion team to get those guys in that, you know, sort of 21, 22, 23 year old window. Um, so if you find a team that's willing to do a prospect for somebody, I think that certainly helps speed up things and you're, you're happy to do that. If not, it's getting the best pro, uh, the best draft pick you can possibly get and then drafting well and developing well so you can speed that process up as well, getting those guys into your NHL lineup. You mentioned Matty Beneers. Do you expect him to join the team after this college season is over? And are there any other draft picks from last season you expect to be competing for roster spots next year? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Matty will do the Olympics, head back to Michigan, where I think they've got a you know, strong chance to compete for a national title. Uh, once this season is done, we certainly would reach out and, and hopefully get a contract done and bring him in for the tail part of this season. Um, and then he's got the summer to sort of train and, and reassess and get to where he needs to get to. But we feel comfortable that he can play in our lineup next year. I always risk, you know, there's a lot of pressure on the young kid coming in, and this is a hell of a league. So, um it doesn't mean he might not have to spend time in, in Coachella Valley next year, but we're hoping that he can step in and play for us. Um, you know, Riker Evans has had a real strong season. Uh, he had a great training camp for us. You know, very mobile defenseman, offensive minded, moves the puck well. Um, he's got like 30 points in 31 games. He's like he's one or two in the Western Hockey League in, in points. So I would say he has an outside chance of cracking the lineup. But um, again, yeah, with young guys, you want to make sure it's better to sort of uh, put them in a situation they can be successful and when they step in, they're absolutely ready to go, then kind of throw them in over their heads and, and play with their confidence a little bit. So uh, those two guys would be the two guys that probably have the best opportunity going into next season. Now, the other guys have continued to track well, but probably would need a little more time before cracking our lineup. A Kraken general manager, Ron Francis, really appreciate your time. Five more home games in the next nine days, including tomorrow afternoon. Best of luck, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you very much, Aaron. Appreciate it.